Hi and welcome to Academic Compliance Academy of Law and Economics. In this video I'm going to talk about the Coase theorem, now the normative version. So remember Coase did not formulate the theorem himself. We have different formulations, we have different terminologies depending on which author has derived what, deduced what from his uh, 1960 paper. In this video I'm going to use the terminology used by Kuda Nolin and Aydan Stavang. And before we go to the normative version, let's look at the two other versions, the strict cost theorem with zero transaction cost, the cost theorem where we have transaction cost, and then we will look to the normative version. So first, without any transaction cost, we have two formulations here. So when transaction costs are zero and efficient use of resources will result from private bargaining regardless of the legal assignment of property rights. Version 1. Version 2. When property rights are well defined and transaction costs are zero, private parties will bargain a Pareto optimal efficient result regardless of the legal assignment of rights. So this is the strict version. This is the classic cost theorem where we say, okay, without any transaction costs, private parties will automatically bargain no matter who has the right to do whatever. They will bargain a Pareto efficient result. When we have transaction cost, it changes a bit. Now we will look at the range. So when is there too much, too many transaction costs? Hence, this theorem is a different version, stipulating that when transaction costs are high enough to prevent private bargaining, the efficient use of resources will depend on how property rights are assigned. That is version one. Second version of the same dilemma, when transaction costs are high enough to prevent bargaining, the use of resources will be Pareto efficient if the rights are allocated in accordance to the result of bargaining would have led to without transaction costs. So when we have transaction costs, we should try to allocate the rights so they represent the agreement, the bargain that the parties would have come to if the transaction cost were not there. And that would be efficient. Now let's look at the normative version. So if all of this fails, what is the last solution? If we have transaction costs, how should we even try to enforce any private bargaining? We should do that by structuring the law so as to remove the impediments to private agreements. Why is this good? Well, in general, no one enters an agreement without gaining some kind of wealth or profit. Hence, private agreement enhances the wealth of both parties. Otherwise, they wouldn't go into an agreement. So we should not have legal arrangement that limit private agreements because then they also limit the possible wealth. So this is the normative Coase theorem. And what is it about? what's it's about. So sometimes though we might have to go in with uh, some legal arrangement that can hinder private agreements but that should be reflected, that should be argumented from another perspective. Hence maybe that these agreements have some kind of externality effect to society, pollution etc. And therefore we need another argument to go and structure the law so it actually does hinder private agreement. So just have this in mind. If we want private bargaining, if we want private agreements, we should not structure the law as to put up a barrier. We should do the opposite and remove as much as possible unless there are other points, externality problems, etc. that can be the argumentation from a legal interference. So this was just a short video on the different Coase dilemmas and how we should conceive this normative version of the Coase theorem. Stay tuned, subscribe to this channel and let's talk much more about law and economics.